I would love to see a picture of the guy who asked him, are you afraid to compete? Please, somebody find me a picture of that dork. It's absurd, man, it really is. And I wish I could sit up here and say I'm shocked by this, but I'm not. People love rooting for somebody when they're on their way to the top, but when they get to the top, then they start wanting to see them fail and root against them. This is one of the weirdest situations I've seen in quite some time heading into the NFL Draft. I need to go over all this though before we get into it. Dating all the way back to last year, we knew two of the top guys heading into next year's draft, which is here now, is no other than Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. These are two young men that have been in the spotlight since day one, and ever since they took their first snaps at the collegiate level, Everybody was like, oh yeah, they're going to be a top pick in the NFL draft one day. The only downside about Williams and Harrison was they couldn't enter the draft earlier because scouts have been drooling over these guys for a while now. And there's a lot of people out there that think both of these young men are going to be the next big thing, and I don't blame them whatsoever. And their stories are relatively simple. Marvin Harrison Jr. dominated college football at Ohio State, and Caleb Williams on the flip side, he was really outstanding at Oklahoma, transferred to USC, and he won a Heisman Trophy. I'm not going to sit up here and hype these guys' game up because you know what they're about. You've seen them play. My words don't do them any justice. They are beyond phenomenal, and they are fantastic prospects. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. I love me some Marvin Harrison Jr., and I love Love me some Kayla Williams, so much love and much respect to those guys. But however, with all that great stuff being said, it looks like we got ourselves a sticky situation here. And it involves no other than the two young men I've been talking about all throughout this video. And I'm going to give you a little warning and disclaimer right now. I might go off in this video, so just be prepared for that. And I know what you're sitting there saying, well Matt, what's going on? Why are you so mad? Why are you so amped up? Because what's going on, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. I can't stand when these nerds try to act like they know the game and they overthink the situation. It's not that complicated. Don't even get me started on the nerds, man. Don't get me started. However, if I do start screaming a little bit, just know I warned you right now. I'm going to try my best not to get too worked up, but if it happens, it happens. I'm very passionate on this topic and subject. Now, you're probably sitting there going, Matt, what in the crap's going on, man? Why are you freaking out? And let me show you right here. News came out earlier today that Marvin Harrison Jr. did not show up to the combine to speak to the media. Why is this a big deal? Well... He was supposed to show up, and he didn't. Now, me personally, and this is just me, maybe you're different, but I could care less. I don't care about this whatsoever. And you're going to have somebody say, well, Matt, if you didn't care about it, you wouldn't be talking about it. No, I'm talking about it because it's trending everywhere. I mean, seriously, what are we doing? Why is this a big deal whatsoever? This was trending all over Twitter, and here's my only reaction to it whatsoever. What's the big deal? He might have had something going on in his life that was more important. And I get that the NFL draft combine, that's important, but does it matter really if Marvin Harrison Jr. shows up to answer a couple questions here and there? I don't think so. And even if news came out that Marvin Harrison Jr. just decided he woke up and wanted to stay in bed and watch a movie or play video games, I still wouldn't care too much about it. And we may come back to that later in this video. Let me know your thoughts on that down below, but let's move on to the Kale Williams situation. This is the one that's even bigger than Marvin Harrison Jr. It's got everybody talking and feeling some type of way. This is what caught a lot of people off guard. Kale Williams declined doing medical examination with teams. To go on top of that, he also chose not to sign off on having his medical records shared with all 32 teams. And I'll show this to you quote unquote, one league source believes Williams is the first combine invitee to attend the event after declining medical exams, which are typically considered to be one of the most essential elements of the combine. And I knew this was gonna happen, so I'm not gonna act shocked. You now have people bringing up the same stuff they were saying about it last year at USC. Oh, he's a diva, he's entitled, and blah, 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 blah. You know what they're saying. And then to go on top of that, you can't make this up. The first question somebody asked him today when he stepped it to the podium was, well, first, let me throw this in there. He said, good morning, everybody. And somebody just randomly goes, are you afraid to compete? I would love to see a picture of the guy who asked him, are you afraid to compete? Please, somebody find me a picture of that dork. Yes, Caleb Williams, arguably one of the most talented college football players you have ever witnessed in your lifetime, whether you want to accept that or not, he is afraid to compete. Caleb Williams, the same young man who told Lincoln Riley in high school, if you don't offer me a scholarship, I'll walk on at Oklahoma and still try to earn the starting spot. He's afraid to compete. Ah, yes, but y'all didn't know that, right? Y'all didn't know that Keller Williams was willing to walk on at Oklahoma and compete for the starting quarterback job, did you? We're talking about the same guy that literally stole Spencer Rattler's job and 
Spencer Rattler, yeah, he wasn't the greatest Oklahoma quarterback of all time, but he wasn't awful by any stretch of the imagination. And Kyler Williams is a better man than me. He wound up answering that question, and he had a great long answer. I'm sure some of you saw it. I'm not even going to throw it into this video because it doesn't matter. Just know he answered it very respectfully. I couldn't imagine putting in 15 plus years of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears into my sport, into my craft, and I've earned a Heisman Trophy. I've earned, potentially, the number one draft selection in the NFL Draft. And somebody has the nerves and the balls to ask me if I'm afraid to compete. Get out of here, dude. Ridiculous, man. Straight up and utterly ridiculous. I say all that to say this. There's also been a little narrative going around that Kayla Williams, since he's declining to do these medical exams, he may not be taking number one overall. And now it's also become extremely popular to hate on Kayla Williams leading up into this NFL draft. And we see this every now and then in our everyday life. You see it with big time YouTubers, Twitch streamers. You see it with Alabama football. You see it everywhere. This is nothing more and nothing less than people have Caleb Williams fatigue. It has been widely known for the past two years that Caleb Williams is going to be the number one overall draft pick. People are sick and tired of hearing about him. So what do they do? They try to come up with any magical reason whatsoever to convince you he's not going to go number one overall. In reality, he is. If you're one of these people that's clinging on to some hope he's not going to go number one i don't know why you would but if you're thinking he's not going to go number one i hate to be the bear bad news buddy he's going number one it's not even up for a debate and there's not even a conversation to be had they just tell you on espn all these crazy reasons he might not go number one so they have something to talk about the reality of the situation is he's going number one but i also want to speak on this where have all these Caleb Williams haters come from? It's absurd, man. It really is. And I wish I could sit up here and say I'm shocked by this, but I'm not. My favorite movie of all time is Spider-Man. And not the new ones. I'm talking about the originals with Tobey Maguire. And in that movie, the Green Goblin told Spider-Man something that resonated with me. And I always think about it even to this day. Green Goblin told Spider-Man the one thing that people love more than a hero is to see a hero fail, fall, die trying. And he continued to say, I believe it's something like, in spite of everything you've done for them, eventually, they will hate you. Just laughing, because you can apply it to this situation perfectly. I don't know what it is about humans, but that is true. People love to see a hero. But even more than a hero, there's something about it they love seeing them fall even more. People love rooting for somebody when they're on their way to the top, but when they get to the top, then they start wanting to see him fail and root against him. And a great example I think of is no other than LeBron James. He is the epitome of that. When LeBron James was growing up, everybody wanted to see him succeed. He didn't have any haters. LeBron James grew up in a terrible environment. Father wasn't in his life. He had all the odds stacked against him, and he was labeled as a chosen one. Everybody wanted to see him succeed. Everybody wanted to see him live up to the expectations and hype. And then he does that. Look at where he's at today. And now he's got 50% of the people in the world hate him, and the other 50%, they love him. Caleb Williams got to the top. He's a generational quarterback prospect, so now there's no longer anything to root for on the journey up. He's at the top, so now people are like, all right, since he's already up there, I guess we might as well root on the downfall. That'd be entertaining. So to all these nerds out here that are very quick to criticize Caleb Williams and question his greatness, just sit back and watch what happens. And then also, I guess I got to address this, the whole, oh, well, he's entitled because he's not doing the medical examinations. I don't even understand that argument because he doesn't need to do them. He has nothing to prove to anybody. That's the equivalent to me tweeting at Elon Musk. Hey, Elon Musk, I know you're the richest man in the world. I know you're a billionaire, but let me see you do a money spread. Show me $10,000 just to prove it. You see what I'm saying? Why does Elon Musk need to prove to some random Joe Schmo named Matt B. Gray that he has money? He doesn't. Same thing here. Caleb doesn't need to prove anything to anybody. You can sit up here and say, oh, he's entitled. Nah, eh, I don't view it that way. Not really. When you're the best, you've earned certain privileges, and that's one of them. There's many more things I could say. I'm going to end it off here. Let me know your thoughts down below. But